All right. What's up, everybody? Y'all know what time it is. It's time for a book gug. Today's book is Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. That is book one of the Infernal Devices, for those of you keeping up with it. So, let's go ahead and get started. It's been a very long time since I read this book. Let's see if it has a prologue, because we skipped them prologues, you know. We going straight to chapter one. We don't have time for no prologues. Oh, I just got to chapter two, which means I missed it like immediately. Nope, there's chapter one. Chapter one begins, The sisters would like to see you in their chambers, Miss Gray. That sounds ominous. Do I normally? Yeah, I normally do the spaces there. The sisters would like doesn't fit. So we are hitting it with a chapter one, The Sisters Would. And it's up to Gug to see what they would. Even if they would. Some people say they wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like the sound of that. To merge their stats, health and attack. Is it going to make two enemies just way better? Because that sounds like a very bad time for us. Just an absolute miserable time. Oh. Speaking of having a miserable time, this guy, he's having it. Alright. Oh, it's end of the round. Alright. So, we may not have to feel the wrath of the sister soul for a while. Probably should have generated some monies there. Let us get that nectar. That way we can at least buy one more gug at the next shop. If all else fails. That should be enough for a potion and a gug. Hey, look at that. See? I told you guys. Potion and a gug. Now, what more can you ask for? Still terrified of what Sister Soul might actually uh, do. Oh, we got a double two lane. Which isn't terrible. Unless Sister Soul here has, you know, just like one of the worst effects in human history. I feel like it's kind of important that we go ahead and learn what Sister Soul does. So maybe we let it get to the end of the round. Oh. It seems like it combines their base stats into a single Gug and kills the other one. Which, not always terrible, I guess. But I'm just going to go ahead and let Sister Soul die and we won't worry about that anymore. Chapter 2, Hell is Cold is the title. You Stupid Little Girl is the opener. Not a very pleasant thing to say. Um, doesn't fit either. So we just get You Stupid Little. It's just going to like make his stats worse. The amniotic pool punishes like negative words. If Okay, so if it receives an attack... It deals double damage back if the attack is weaker than, I assume, this one's attack? And its name is Stultifant, or Stultifant, perhaps. A cute, a cute little gug. Got some holes going in these antennas on its head. All right, let's see here. Oof, absolutely brutal situation there. We might just die flat up after this round. Oh, too many nerfs, and that one's healing? What was that? What's, what's happening there? Oh yeah, 
Yeah, that's that's a GG. I'll just I'll just go ahead and take my hits to the face. We can't out damage whatever's happening to the Chibi Moon fiend over there. So with that, we'll move to chapter three. Hopefully it does us a little nicer than the first two chapters have. Chapter 3. The Institute. In the dream, Tessa lay once again tied to the narrow breast bed in the dark house. She's like a captured prisoner. Uh, this isn't like a smut book, I promise. All right, show us some some good dream Tessa behavior here, Gug. We need a banger of a Gug to carry us through a run here. Now we have a little quote here at the start of chapter three: "Love, hope, fear, faith. These make humanity. These are its sign and note and character." Robert Browning. How beautiful. Speaking of beautiful, look at this fuzzy little guy. His name is. Divoyerm, Divoyerm, Divoyerm. Take two additional damage if responding to a negative event. Who even knows what that means? Does he just deal two damage to himself when he goes in? We can only hope that that is not the case. We got fed a two. All right, he did not take two damage, so that's phenomenal. Oh, I didn't mean to switch them out. I wanted to make some nectar. No. All right, we'll be in the same situation as last time, where we can't afford at least another Gug and some health. But that's it. All right. Oh, you know what? If we buy the three one here. We can actually get some attack on our healthiest good. There we go. Another double two lane against a Fetitude. Against a Fetitude is honestly phenomenal. As far as you know, the starts you get, that's that's one of the better ones. Um We can let this one get low because we're going to use him to transcend here. Speaking of transcending, we need to get to chapter 4. Chapter 4, We Are Shadows. The moment Tessa transformed. Let's see here. I think we're just going to get the moment Tessa here. Yeah, definitely not fitting a transformed in there. gonna be a whole uh, a whole uh, s section of Tessa Gugs after this run convert any effect used this round to a mysterious language oh yes please do So nothing game breaking, nothing really helpful either so far. Got a fun tornado uh, gug here named Tessimo. 7-Eleven. Yukagon. All right. We need enough money to buy a 20. A 20 nectar gug, so as soon as we get to 20, which we have done, I'm going to try and heal up as often as possible. We don't have anything that can kill a 9 in one hit, so what's our best choice here? Heal up Tessimo, I think. And then pull gug and have Diverim fight the other one. 
I want to call him Divarim, even though it's definitely like Divoerm or whatever. Alright, so we can't afford a 20 Gug. It's going to have to be a normal Gug. Because that's all we can't afford. The Gibbler Gorge. Alright. Come on, Chapter 5. Chapter 5 is titled The Shadowhunter's Codex. We have a, another quote here. Dreams are true while they last, and do we not live in dreams? By Alfred Lord Tennyson. Uh, it took an age of wandering. Not wondering, but wandering. It took an age of wandering. Can't do it. It took an age of... It's up to Gug to decide what it took an age of. But it took... Multiply all stat values by the round count. Now, if that includes enemies... Uh-oh. It says all stat values. So we need to kill all enemies every turn. And then hopefully just buff all of our own. But the back line still going to exist is the actual terrifying part about this. Um, Tessimo just has a big question mark now. I'm going to assume they need to be in play for this to take account. Or to, for this to take effect. Alright, so that's the end of the first round. So nothing happened because, obviously... They all just have question marks now. What is happening? Do they still have effects? Oh, yeah. But... I think it's because Tessimo is changing their language and the game doesn't know what to do with the new <laughs> information. So you just have to remember what they do. And luckily it seems like Tessimo's effect actually only affects its own stats. So that's actually not bad at all. Um, Temper Relics here. Um, but this round it should get its stats multiplied by three. So it should become an absolute beast. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, yeah, Tessimo, you're going to have to go in there and take a hit, but... Temporalix might be the, the just father of all book gugs. I don't know that we've ever got anything that good. It's going to fry here soon. I can't imagine it can <laughs> grow like that forever. It's like a thousand, a thousand already. Uh, yeah, and we've got some... We've got some Gug money here. Give us that juice. We need it. He needs his juice. Give it to him. He's just a baby. Alright, well obviously we're putting in the friggin' god here who's just unkillable. I mean, we're just on a, we're on a, a very possibly good run here. Is that doodle a bobble? <laughs> Draw a random doodle on the battlefield, altering its terrain until the end of the encounter. Good old doodle a bobble. It's not doodle bob, guys. That's copyright protected. This is doodle a bobble. That's different. Yeah, uh, the 5k, 5k, I think is fine. I doubt I need to pull him out to gain any stats. Oh no, it's back for Fingerglucklump. Then we have Legend of Roar and Muffagor. Alright, well, we don't want to take these hits here, so let's set up some defense. Oh no. I don't know what I was choosing there. 
can't read any of my gugs anymore, so I don't know what kind of choices I was making. All right, this is our last amniotic pool if we are victorious. So, you know, big chance for big things here. We're on chapter seven, the Clockwork Girl, and it has a pretty fun opener. I feel like it could be possible. It says it had grown dark outside the institute and Sophie's lantern cast strange dancing shadows on the wall as she led Tessa down one flight of stone stairs after another. So we start off here with It Had Grown Dark. I don't think we get outside, but It Had Grown Dark should be interpreted as something amazing, I feel like. Temporalic's at like 100k, 100k right now. It gains stealth and invisibility, which I doubt actually does anything. Nocturnics. I hate to hate on you like that, but it just normally doesn't do anything. Apart from that one invincible gug I ran into that time, I've never seen uh, armor uh, do anything. So as long as we're not getting bombarded with just rows of unstoppable gugs, we should be fine here. No! Guys, we got a Unity crash. It's not necessarily over. We could have a, uh, a continue button if we get back into the game. Let's hope. Let's hope. Would be an absolute shame to lose the book gug run that way. Alright, we do have a continue here. The question is, does it soft lock the game? Uh, yep. It's gone. Gone forever. Let's see. I, th I think with a good conscience we can call that a victory. It was the last round. We had four gugs. We had one with 100k health and attack. Um, so I'm happy to, to call that a success. Now, if you if you are not happy with that just drop a comment and say I'm not happy with that and I will I'll refilm the whole video and do it again but anyway uh, thanks for watching you guys have a great one and I'll see you again next time